Hey, good morning! It is Friday morning here in the stamping room with Carol and Benny. Thank you for joining me. If you are live on Facebook at this very moment, um, thank you for coming into my stamping room on this Friday morning. If you are um, watching this on replay, welcome as well. So I hope you enjoy this um, Facebook Live this morning because it's going to be a little bit different than normal and I'm really excited about it and a little bit nervous. So hey Katrina, how are you? Gosh, it's all people are coming in fast this morning. Facebook is going to be kind to me, which I'm very pleased about because last week it, Facebook wasn't kind. I'm just tuning in on my laptop here guys. I'm so I can see your comments. Now, so what's so different about this Facebook Live this morning? I am going to be showing you, good morning Denise, good morning Laura, how are you? I'm gonna be showing you around my craft room and it's kind of, I'm a little bit nervous about it because it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, peeling back the curtain and showing all of the, um, the, I don't know, the tricks. <laughs> it's like the Wizard of Oz, seeing the Wizard of Oz. Um, and he's actually just a little, little tiny man. Hey Amanda, how are you? Good morning, Jeanette. Found me at last. I'm here, I'm here. So over the last week, I don't know why, but I've been having a clean out of my, um, stamping room um, I kind of uh, it gets to the point where my stamping room is never super messy it just can get a bit disheveled um, I don't know if you find that if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator then we have new catalogues a, a number of times a year and um, good morning Vicky good morning T how are you girls um, and when those new catalogues come in especially the new annual catalog there's a lot of things that get retired and then there is a lot of things that um, need to be moved out and then the new stuff needs to be moved in. That's kind of the fun bit. And I found that I hadn't done that and it was starting to become a bit of a problem for me. The clutter was starting to clutter up my mind as well. So this week it was clean out time and I thought, you know what? The room's looking pretty neat. This is a good time for you guys to have a little peekaboo. Good morning, Deborah. You're sitting in a car on your way to see oh, some demos in Bunbury. Hey. No, you're not driving. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, well, welcome. Welcome, Deborah. So the first things I wanted to tell you um, is a little bit of a backstory of my craft room. My craft room has moved around the house. It started, gosh, where did it start off? I think it started off in one of our front bedrooms. Um, this is a, we've just got a little 1920s cottage that we bought when it was just Chris and I, and now we've got three boys. Um, and we just, so as our life has changed, so has where my craft room has lived. So it started off a little desk in, one um, spare bedroom. Um, when I say one spare bedroom, we had like two kids in one room and one was a, a spare room that we had all that junk in. It was a junk room really. Um, so we moved some of the junk to one side and we put a desk in there for me when I started stamping up um, eight, eight years ago. Um, and I didn't have a lot of stuff so that wasn't, it didn't take up a lot of room. Um, and then as, then we needed to use that room because we had another baby. And um, I even ended up moving my craft desk into our master bedroom um, for about a year. It lived in there. And um, if any of you have ever seen one of my convention videos, if you're watching on YouTube, have a look down at my convention videos because you will see when the craft room was I shared it with my husband in our bedroom and that was very funny for a while. I started off really quiet. I started off that, you know, if I needed to do the heat gunning, I would sneak down 
to the kitchen and do the heat gunning down the kitchen so I wouldn't wake Chris up because I like to craft at night and really it was the only time I could craft because the kids were little and running around all day. Um, so I would, but then as time went on, I got a bit like relaxed about it all and I would just like heat gun while it was like three o'clock in the morning and he was asleep like just behind me, me and then I would be punching things out with my punches and um, it actually worked out really well. I felt, it didn't feel lonely, like I was awake late at night, but I was, um, I was, you know, Chris was just asleep over there. It felt kind of like we were close. Um, but, you know, eventually I thought it's probably wise to move <laughs> out of the, the bedroom to have my craft room, mostly just because when I had friends over who wanted to craft, we didn't want, like I didn't want to take them into my bedroom. Um, but so then things life changed a little bit for me and I um, wasn't working out of the home anymore and I decided to give this Stampin' Up! thing a bit of a go as a business. And I moved, I moved much to their dismay, I moved my kids out of the playroom, which really had turned into the Lego trash room, um, which is the room I'm in now. It used to be our old dining room, that was the original, it was original um, configuration. Then it was the kids' playroom for a good long time, maybe eight years. And it's in the middle of our house and it's kind of the walkway between the bedrooms and um, our family room downstairs where our kitchen is. And um, when I say downstairs, it's like three stairs. It's not like grand downstairs. Um, and so it was always a mess with toys and things and it was a real um, drama. And there I was up in this my our little bedroom with my stamping stuff and I kept it neat and I thought, well, this doesn't make any sense. So I swapped it over. I took over this room and kind of clawed it back to being adult space, slowly clawing my house back from being kid space everywhere to having some more adult space. And I put the, all my boys slept in one room at that stage and they had a playroom where I could close the door and all the mess was behind closed doors. It was fabulous. So I've been here in my stamping room for um, a good, I don't know, maybe three years, two, three years. Um, and it, I was having classes in here and I had a big table, actually this table you can see behind me, um, a big white Ikea massive table that was in the middle of my room and I would have classes in here. Um, I had a little bit of a respite from classes last year and just did some clubs. Um, but this year I'm back to classes again, but you know, I thought I'm just doing them once a month here locally and I'm doing them online. Um, so I don't really need that big table here because it's only one day of the month that I'm having people. So, um, I'm back down in the family room doing classes back where it all started. My kids have to quickly eat their dinner and then they go and hang out in my bedroom and watch TV on class night. That's fine, it's one night a week, right? Uh, one night a month. And um, I have this whole room for myself. So I'm a bit lucky. I get a whole room in my house for myself. But in saying that, I, I do work my business um, all the days of the week that the kids are at school. Am I a bit just, I think I feel like, maybe the camera is a bit skew with. Anyways. So I kind of feel like um, this is my office. It's my office, it's my crafting space, and it's my general happy place in the, um, the house. So over the last eight years, I've kind of tried a lot of different things with my crafting space, and I've tried a lot of um, different organizational things, and I think it's still like, my husband comes home every you know number of months and he goes oh far out you've changed the room around again you know like I've spent all day and it's all upside down and it's all crazy and I'm all putting it back together again but 
I like doing that, that makes me happy. I don't know about you guys, do you like to kind of change up your crafting space? But one of the things that probably has um, been my main focus in the whole time that I've been in Stampin' Up! and um, crafting a lot is that I don't want to spend a lot of money on my craft room and that's for a couple um, of reasons but one main one is that I feel that even though I would love wouldn't you love to be um, one of those amazing crafters that can just go and get all these fabulous cupboards and built-ins and you know there are some great amazing things out there in these fabulous um, craft rooms and, and I would love I think we would all love to have that um, but the the thing for me is that um, at this point in time my business is not bringing in the million dollars that I would need to facilitate that craft room um, and also there's a lot of other things that need happening on my poor little 1920s cottage before decking out my craft room we need another bedroom for my kiddos because they're growing up and we need to re-roof and re-veranda and you know the list goes on so the budget is not there to build this amaz amazing um, craft room good morning Leone how are you um, so I do my craft room on a budget and I always have. I, I'm looking all the time for the things that I want. It all costs money. It sure does, Neoni. And I want money to buy new stamps, new ink, new paper, um, all that kind of stuff. But don't get me wrong, I like it pretty. You know, I like the craft room pretty. And so I feel that I've kind of had a balance. Um, if I've bought anything, it's from IKEA. We love IKEA, um, uh, but it's it's not been a lot of stuff. Um, and the things I've got a lot of stuff for free. You can get a lot of stuff for free. Um, and I've thought a lot. Think before you buy. That's my biggest tip. Think about how you would use it. So a lot of girls have got those um, IKEA cubes, and I've got one over in the corner. They've got the IKEA cubes, and they've got it all filled with the pretty papers. Um, it looks fabulous. They've got all their paper out on show, and it looks fabulous. It's just not my thing. Um, is yours is mostly IKEA, Laura? Yeah. So the the lovely papers on display, it's just not my thing. And even though I think it looks fantastic and I can certainly imagine in if I had a really big craft space I mean I have a whole room right but you'll see in a minute where the um, the oh no Kikea in Tasmania oh Amanda <laughs> take a truck <laughs> take a truck to Melbourne um, obviously over on the boat first take a truck on the boat and then come back um, so, oh gosh, now I forgot where I was at. Oh yes, so you'll see in a minute why I have some problems with wall space. Because I don't have a lot of wall space in this room. This, this wall behind me is pretty much my only wall. Um, but, um, so if, if I had lots of wall space, I might have one of these beautiful IKEA cupboards for paper. But it's actually, the way I do my paper, is probably it just suits me it just works for me and I've pretty much had it that way over the last seven years and it just totally works so once you find something that works you have to really question whether just because other people are doing it whether that is going to work for you is it worth spending the money on something just because it's just because everyone's doing it right um, the other thing that really works for me is this, uh, the Stampin' Up! Spinnery Caddy thingy. I know a lot of people have the, the ones that you can buy from Coalcraft, I believe is the um, website, which is on the wall and you slot in the, um, or people would even make them, got crafty husbands or dads or whatever, friends, and they make them so you can fit all the ink pads in. 
I thought about that too because it looks so pretty, but at the end of the day, this works for me. Hey Pauline, how are you? Um, this works. You know, I like that it spins, I like it doesn't take up wall space because wall space for me is at a premium. So that is another consideration for me. But, um, so what I'm saying is, you can do it on a budget. You'll see as I cruise around my craft space with you guys, um, and please ask if you want to see some, more of something, because if I move on too fast, you go, hey Carolyn, go back and I want to see, check that out. Um, Work on, you can do this on a budget. I have bought one, two, three things from Ikea in this room, big things. The rest of it I've either found on Gumtree, I've found on Facebook buy, sell, swap sites, or my husband's built it, um, or yeah. That's it, like a lot of it I have um, repurposed for my own uses. So, um, oh, and secondly, you don't need to have all this space. Remember, I started off with a little desk um, to myself. Uh, I have crafty ladies in my classes that say, you know, they don't even have room for a desk. They might be retired and they've downsized and they don't even have room to have a whole desk to themselves, let alone a room, and they work on the um, on the kitchen table. Well, then I say, run to Ikea and get yourself one of those little trolleys, which I'm gonna show you, that my Rascock um, trolley, I think it's pronounced. That is just a, a, a craft room on wheels, in my opinion. So if you're absolutely limited, limited in space, get yourself a trolley, and then you can trolley your little craft room around with you to your kitchen, to wherever. I even take it on craft retreat. So that is, um, that is if you absolutely don't have a lot of space, that's what I would recommend. Otherwise, just a desk, and I'll show you some tips for just working on just with one desk. Um, or if you're on a budget, there's lots of ways around um, being able to have some nice space as well. Are you ready to check out the craft room? Do you want to see? Oh, I'm nervous. I hope you guys like it. All right, so I'm going to undo you from my stand and flip you guys over. Like I said, it's the big, um, you'll see. Okay, so you have... Oh, yeah, it wouldn't change it on oh, wheels. Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to um, move a couple of things because it's like quickly when friends come round. Okay, and you're quickly tidying up still. So this is my craft room. Let me just take you here. So this is our front door. And look, my, I've even moved my husband's bike out. It's in our um, hallway. Um, sometimes it lives in my craft room. So this is, we have a little extra space here that um, that little cupboard here actually has a lot of my stationery in it um, because, and there's Fudgy, say hello to Fudge, because um, it doesn't all fit in my room and I'll show you why. That's my, one of my little paper creations, that's my my paper dress that I made. And look, even behind here, the printer has to sneak into the hallway and my all my um, aprons and things here, my Stampin' Up! aprons and things. So this is my craft room. I'm gonna just go slow so you guys can sticky beak. Um, you have the exact same chest of drawers. <laughs> Isn't that funny? This was um, my my beautiful lifetime friend, Kira Lee. She made me a little chest of drawers or re um, redecorated my little chest of drawers uh, for every baby I had. So the last one was a toy box, actually. So she's very clever. So that's, that's my latest acquisition from Kmart. So this is for me and it's also for my boys to remind them that they can think big. 
So this is my craft room and I'm very lucky to have these beautiful French doors that were here when we moved in. Um, and it lets in a lot of natural light and I'm really susceptible to light and getting a bit blue if I don't have natural light. So um, this is one of the reasons why having this room was really important for me. So um, I'll just take you on a bit of a, a, a quick tour. So we'll start on this side and we'll keep going around. So this is one of those QB things I did actually buy from Ikea. I purchased this one. It's the, one of the old style ones, but I like it. Um, I've got, I have a little, have I, oh, Jiminy Crickets, I dropped the phone. Um, so this is where I take some of my photos, um, just in this little photo box that I bought from Hong Kong. Um, I can do that late at night, so that's pretty cool. I don't have to wait for the morning to take a photo. Uh, and that was, I don't know, maybe $140 from a Hong Kong eBay place. Um, so a lot of the little decorations and things you can see I've made myself. There's my camera, my trusty camera that my hubby bought me. I think he bought that um, secondhand as well. This was, um, I don't know what this is called. It's one of those papery, mm, someone's going to know what the name of that is. But I found it many years ago. All these old stamps way before I was into stamping up. And I decorated it and things just by stamping on the back of it and slotting that paper in with the stamps that had, oh, look at that. The child has been placing a Nerf bullet in my room. Very funny. Okay. <clears throat> Naughty children. Okay, so um, that was, I thought, gosh, wasn't that prevalent? Providence? I don't think that's a word, Carolyn. Providence. Um, that I actually get, ended up getting into Stampin' Up. So here I have a lot of my files, a lot of past catalogues live in here, old catalogues. Lots of old, my old catalogues live in here. Um, here is my designer series paper. I like to keep that standing up in these magazine racks. Here's some cards that I need to display. I've just bought a pin-up board, but I hadn't had time to pop it up. And cards that people send me, um, special cards from friends, I want to be able to display. Um, here I've got all of my glimmer sheets and my foil sheets and I tend to keep those things even once they retire because they're just awesome anything glimmery I like and I like to keep the designer series papers in here I've done shares with my team but I like to keep them in the original packaging because it has the names of the colors on the back so keeping them in their original packaging for me is a really is really a good idea. I've got some catalogs. If anyone wants a catalog, Stampin' Up! catalog, I can get that out to them. Here I've got my cards that I've made that I can use um, for birthdays and so on and so forth. It's important, I think, to have them on display. For a long time they hid in a... Uh, they are 12 by 12 magazine holders. Um, Denise, they were from... Uh, it's uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the company. It was a local company that's just closed down up here in the hills. Well, it wasn't a local company. It was a company that's their office is closed down in the hills, and I can't think of it. You transfer them into twelve by twelve pocket pages as they are sturdier. Ah, yes, I am just frugal, and that's just I just slit them at the top. It works. It saves on recy um, I'm repurposing that plastic, which we're all about recycling here in our house. So um, I just slit them at the top and use them as they are. Easy peasy. So here we've got, um, this is my postage. This is like my mail section. So here I've got some prepaid envelopes. I've got some stickers. I've got some address stickers. I have address stickers. Oh, and catalogue stickers stickers that go on the back of my catalog everything is there to use Ooh, 
gosh, now it's all gone crazy, to try and get things done quickly. If I find that I, um, if it's not all in one place or if it's too hard to get to, I'm lazy and things don't get posted out. So I'm trying to be a lot better with that stuff. Um, here I've got some excess cardstock that I can't fit into my files and just a little bit of my twine for making things pretty, you know, tied up with string. Um, and here I've got, this is where I keep some um, of my envelopes, white envelopes, and it says retired dyes, but it's actually, I think I keep my clear plastic in envelopes in there. Hi, Michelle, how you doing, hun? In um, here, I've got products that I use for giveaways and incentives for team, for customers, um, yeah, pretty things, stamping up pens and kits and things that have retired, anything that's not been used but's brand new, I use those. In here I've got, oh, this is my dirty little secret, I've got all my retired designer series paper. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do with that, but <clears throat> until then it sits there it's my dirty secret here I've got plastic bags use lots of just plastic bags for putting all bits and bobs in and wrapping paper so if I'm sending out a present to one of my team members or to customer I wrap it up usually white tissue paper here we've I've been keeping um, all of our now I just know that that's gonna I've lost all of our stamping success magazines for since I've joined Stampin' Up. You know that they all fall out when you don't. So I've been normally pretty good and, I've, and I pop them in, the folder. But here I've been very naughty and just popped these ones in because I think my, I need another folder. But I'm in denial. So, and... Uh, my album for my project live stuff so i'm not going to pop that back in because i don't i need another fair pair of hands here is my other dirty secret of all of my ribbons and things which have retired embellishments holy smokes i'm going to bag them all up and start giving them away to customers as well so i'm very lucky i've got this beautiful fireplace in my stamping room it um, it's one of the things about this house when we bought it that I just adored. The problem is, do you see this? We used to have a pot belly in here when before we extended our house and the flue got stuck. We can't get the flue out. <laughs> and my husband doesn't want to get up on top of the roof to get it out. I'd really love to put like some nice wood in there, like do a display. But instead I've got this flue. Oh, well. Not to worry. Um, here I've got a fabulous, my um, my team members, Nat and Lynn and I made, did a um, did a fair a long time ago and we made that beautiful um, butterfly pattern inspired by another demonstrator who did something a bit similar. But I've never been able to get rid of it. It is just so pretty. I love it. Um... This is the first card I ever Stampin' Up card I ever made, and I'm glad I never got rid of it because it's um, it just makes my heart sing that it all started from this little baby here. It's something I drew in high school, but this is um, the Stampin' Up statement of the heart, and a beautiful friend of mine gave that to me. This is a stamp I made in um, in Utah. It, you can tell why I don't create the stamps because that was horrible. But I made it in Utah and I can't bear to lose it. So um, all of my Enid Blyton books from my childhood. My big sister bought me each one of those when she was at her part-time job. I'm eight years younger than she is. And she bought me all of them and I adore them. I love the colours here in my stamping room. My little stamping doll that I made. Some little knick-knack and things over there. So this is my um, stamping station that I'm really, really pleased with. 
So for me, I'm, I always tell people I am a lazy stamper. And that is true. I am a really lazy stamper. But what I have noticed, when I say lazy stamper, I mean I like to keep things close to me when I stamp. I don't like to have to move too far. The problem was now that I'm doing this, um, you know, pretty much as my job, I worked out that I need to move a little bit more. You cannot sit all day in the one place and you need to move. So creating this stamping station at least gets me up out of my chair to move to the other side of the room occasionally. So this is really great for me. It's standing height and um, it's actually made out of pallets. Um, it's a counter that... It's actually a little, it's a counter, so you can stand it and sell stuff at a fair. Um, we used it at the Adelaide uh, hand stitching fair a few years ago, and when I got it home I thought, oh, I wonder if it will fit in this space, and it very much does, just. So I don't know how we'll go getting it out, um, but it just wedges in and I've got these little um, gingham curtains that I made a long time ago to hide all of the bits and bobs behind it. What is behind it? Um, my spare big shot, that's Bert, where Bert lives at the moment. I've got my craft bags, my sewing machine, um, my uh, photo stuff. This bag here, this bag here that we got from Stampin' Up! a number of years ago, which is awesome. I've got my excess Christmas stamps in there as well that I didn't have room to put my Christmas stamps, uh, my Christmas cards that I made too many of. But up the top is really, I think, one of my happy places. So here I have my heat gun set up all the time. This is something I can do now that my youngest is seven and he knows not to touch it. Um, this room has changed since my children have grown up a little bit because I can be leave things out more. We had a big discussion a few years ago, um, you know, about I think mum can leave her things out now, but you guys you know, this is the rules. So um, I leave this out now and they haven't, you know, burnt anything, which is good. So heat gun left out on my chopping board so it doesn't damage anything. Bertha Big Shot, she's got pride of place there, of course. We know it's Bertha because she has a pink ribbon and Bert has a blue ribbon. Here's all of my dies and things live in this little crate. Here I have all of my old washi tapes and they are there because I use them when I do envelopes. Um, if, I, if I ever send an envelope out without washi tape, it's an unusual thing because I tend not to send them out naked. So all my retired washi tapes go here. Heat gun, that's, um, I use that if I'm doing 3D things and my middle son Macaulay loves them. Ribbon for tying up um, packages and this is all retired ribbon for tying up packages and sending out catalogs I need you need a dust cover <laughs> no I don't because I, you know what um, it is a little dusty but um, I use it every day so I, that would just it would never go on um, here I've got some dies that I use all the time that um, I've put on these little rings. Here's its partner. At the moment, it's sitting here with blue tack, but I've got to actually nip down to the hardware shop and stick some little hooks underneath because I thought it would be handy just to have those hooks there underneath that I could then grab those dies that I use all the time for that. I've got my little... Oh, here's an, another Ikea thing. I'll probably say, like, I've bought three things from Ikea and I've actually bought, like, 50 things from Ikea. Um, just, um, I have this paper towel over it. If I'm ever taking photos over here, I can move these things out and take photos and that just makes it a little bit of a softer light. There's one of those salt lamp um, things that my big sister gave to me for my birthday this year and so 
I figured this was a nice place, makes the room feel warm. Little um, bin for all of my um, bits and pieces that come out of my dies, my die brush and little tray. It's that it's retired Stampin' Up! product, but it's awesome. Command hook rocks. Yes, I should get one of those. Where do I get those from, Amanda? Um, there are all of my framelits in this little crate and my embossing folders as well. I'm trying this. It's new. I used to store them somewhere else, but I'm thinking this makes better sense. So I'm going to try that. But that is my um, cutting station and um, dies and heat gun and get me up off my butt um, to cut things. Okay, so around here, it looks very grand that I've got a desk, but this desk is, um, and this setup is, is not actually especially very grand. First of all, I need to show you this. This is my electric knee rug. I love it. I love it so much. I, you have that electric knee rug on just about every day in this cold um, hills, Adelaide Hills weather. So instead of heating up the whole room, I just heat up my, my lap. So um, I have here a couple of things. Okay, so I have this recycled desk chair and I move that all around the room. So when I'm crafting, it's over here at my craft desk. Um, but when I'm doing, you know, um, computer work, I move it over here. I'm lucky I have a laptop, so a lot of the time I can be down in sitting on the couch um, with my kiddos or with my husband at night time and be doing stuff on my laptop wherever I like to be. But I found that separating, and often I used to be over here at my craft desk with it, but what I found is when I had my crafty, my creative space, and my business space in one space, my head just couldn't separate the two. Um, and I was like quickly doing something for my team when I should have been making cards or I was thinking about what card I should make next when I should have been doing something businessy. So I've separated the two worlds. Um, I've separated the crafty world and the businessy world, and I'm hoping that keeps my mind straight. So we'll see how we go. I do my videos here. I, I'm on this desk and I'm facing that way if you've ever seen any of my other videos. So here I've got a little, poor little, um, you know, fo folder -y thing. It's got this top desk has just got all of, you know, businessy stuff, markers and Dymo Labeler, love that, and all that kind of stuff in there. This one has just got all of my businessy files, accounting, and all that kind of hoo-ha in there. This one is my kind of, um, you know, my wherewithal, everything that's papery I'm working on at the moment, Thing, next cards that need to be blogged and that kind of stuff. This one is, I've blogged it, I've finished with it, I now need to send it out. I am bad at that. I'm really sorry. I'm like a six month behind on my team birthday cards. I'm just the worst person in the world sometimes, I feel like, with this stuff. Um, and I apologise. Um, but I'm trying to be better. So this is how I'm trying to be better. I've got all of these cards that I've made. And they're right here, and so I'm hoping to be able to write in some, get them out quicker. I've got my envelopes and my little, these are my personal little, they go on the back of my um, envelopes for my personal cards I send out. And I have one for business. Um, and this is my birthdays for that I've set up for my family, so I don't forget their birthdays because they will hunt me down. So, um, and here I've got my new stamping um, planner, which is awesome. And I'm using that stamping planner is so, well, it's not just a planner for stampers, but it's a planner for any old person. So you can use this even if you do not stamp, which just blows my mind. 
here I've got these beautiful little bowls that my um, my beautiful friend Joanne handmade for me and I put my stamps and things in there. My mug I got from Utah when the incentive trip went over there and I went with my beautiful friend Angela as her guest. That's my laptop. Here I've got of course my catalogue and anything I'm working on and here I've got some bits and bobs that I'm working on or I need to send out. So this table I got it for free. It was a table that had horrible um, horrible chairs that went with it. So I did get these chairs from Ikea. These were I've had these when I was doing classes. But this table, I got it from like a buy, sell, swap group and it was for free and it had a wonky leg and my husband fixed the wonky leg. And it's nothing fancy. You can, t like it is nothing fancy, but it does the trick. I would prefer it to be white and I know I could paint it, but I, I can't be bothered. I don't have time. So, um, you know, I have better things to do with my time. So it is a sturdy little desk. And when I'm not using it to do businessy stuff on, I can set up and do like make, you know, if I need to do a whole heap of cards or I need to lay out gifts, that's the beauty of having a laptop is you can get, you know, close the laptop, move the catalogs out of the way. This is for, then I can use this for, um, you know, for stamping. So on this side of my desk, it is kind of business and all of my business stuff. And on this side, it's stamping and creative. And this is the way my brain works best. So that's that's an envelope that needs to go out to a friend. So I'm just going to turn it over. Um, so here, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about where I keep my paper. So a lot of people have those, you know, these cubes over here and they have those beautiful storage of paper. And I think that works great for a lot of people. But for me... Um, I think for me, I just wouldn't like the dust that would collect on the paper. I would be worried that the paper would fade because this room is really bright um, and I wouldn't get through the paper fast enough before it faded. Um, and also it just would take up a lot of room. Now, if you could see, I've got this big, um, big doorway. I've got a big fireplace and little spaces either side. I've got this big window space where I can't put anything and I've just got this one wall where I can put things against but it's also where I need to put a desk against as well to take use of powerpoints and things and then I've just got a little tiny space over there now normally there is a door hanging here so you wouldn't even be able to see that um, bookcase but my husband is sanding back that door so it's it's it's, he's been sanding it for a while now, but <laughs> well, hopefully it'll, and those are um, actually little blinds that slide across so I can close that space off. And there's my wall calendar, which normally goes on the back of my door, which is missing. Anyways, so as you can see, I don't have a lot of wall space. So wall space is at a premium for me. And I really like to have my paper close. Like I said, mostly I'm fairly lazy. So I use this massive, old, grey, nasty looking file. But it is awesome. It is awesome because it is so big. I just got it from a Goodwill store, I think, many years ago. It's really heavy. But it has all of my cardstock in it. I got this chopping block from Ikea. It was going out for a few dollars. And I just thought it made um, it look a little bit prettier. Um, and down the bottom, I've got all of my other cardstock, my, uh, goodness, vellum and watercolour paper and thick paper and shimmery paper. It's all in files. So when I want to use, um, let's have a look. Always artichoke, one of the less appreciated colours, I feel. Um, I've got a little dot here of, of always artichoke that I've punched out. Um, I've got these old files. I have my excess bits and bobs and obviously some strays that have made it in here. And then I have my full sheet behind there. 
the bits and bobs are meant to be living in there but they've all they've escaped so that's and that's it keeps everything nice use a filing cabinet too Lorraine you know what it keeps everything nice and flat it keeps the color nice I you know it doesn't take up very much room for me and I've moved that filing cabinet around a lot it's lived under my desk it's lived you know I used to have it on wheels and I may put the wheels back on it now that it's living here because a really good thing for me is I can wheel it close to the window and I can take some photographs of my cards on it as well I've now put my guillotine on the top of it which comes off really easy and is a really good place for me to take my card photos to but the guillotines there we used to sell that stamping up I'd really I love guillotine so that's really handy for me too because here I've got my guillotine my paper I swivel I've got my rascock now I've got a um, I can't show you outside <sighs> because outside is like my worst nightmare of my house it is the old veranda that we've got to um, we're gonna pull off soon and I hope and um, and reap and redo um, so my rascock um, has all of my bits and bobs I use a lot on the top of it you're a filing girl too oh, I see a few of us are hey um and uh, I've got what have I got here I've got the foam piercing mats I've got um, I love glue dots and I'm really now addicted to the mini stamping dimensionals I've got some old files um, what else have I got lots of adhesives oh love the fine tip glue staplers some things that are retired that I can't get why did we retire that holy moly why 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 um, here I keep my ribbons underneath and um, I love to have my ribbons on show but I again they can't um, they can't take up too much space you know because space is a premium so they're on show there I can grab them quick here I've got just sort of like some extra stuff that I need I've got um, my envelope punch board some my some cleaning products this is a folder I have of some of my favorite cards if I ever need inspiration um, and that's the brayer sponge brayer that I keep likes to keep close I've got a little bin that just hangs off the edge and these little extra bits I got them from a cheapy shop and I like to have they just mean that I can keep cutters and things nice and close by sometimes I put my catalog in there too so that's the rascog this still um, one here I bought this and I'm trying to think of what it's called uh, Alex and Alex drawer I bought the Alex drawer from Ikea and it was from um, it was from the as is section because you know like I I'm frugal you have three rascogs one has all the dog food and treats in it <laughs> that's so cute Denise um, so I took the wheels off of mine or it never came with wheels but it fits underneath my desk oh, what's that a little bit of blue tape it fits underneath my desk well that way and in here I think I've shown you guys some of this stuff before but I have um, all the things I kind of need for stamping um, I have my little eraser there I have a little this is a little rubber that takes off ink sometimes it's not awesome it's not my favorite um, I've got paper clips I go through a lot of paper clips little rubbers and gosh I got this from Stampin' Up once it's um it's a little tape if you I would seriously suggest I use this all the time and it's really girly and pretty and the boys don't steal it it doesn't ever leave my my area to go and live in my husband's shed which I like that so that's the you know post-it notes that kind of stuff here I have my embossing station I've got I took these out of bags that was one of my best things to ever do take these out of bags um, and I just keep all of the embossing 
things that I don't use a lot with a label upside down the white the clear and the dazzling diamonds I keep in these because I use them a lot um, and it's a little bit of um, masking for when I do masking this is kind of like post-it note on a reel but it's all sticky at the back I got that from Officeworks so I love having the embossing station really close because I emboss more there was a little hammer wasn't there um, Nicole did you get the hammer here it just got some baby wipes um, a few framelits and things this kind of area of sort of repurposed recently it used to have all of my framelits in it but I've just moved my framelits out so this is kind of in a bit of a I don't know kind of it's in a halfway point at the moment and down here this probably needs to move up a, a slot now it's where I keep all of my doilies dimensionals dots sequins snails excess trimming blades excess daubers excess wink of Stella because I cannot possibly go without that um, excess uh, glues it all has to be there oh and another set of watercolor pencils in case the world ends and I'm caught short because I need two sets I don't know why I bought two sets but I I really need two sets okay yes with a little screwdriver in it too oh that's adorable Nicole stamping up are good to us aren't they well they used to really give us all this cute stuff and I had to buy all of it I was their best customer when we had um memento mall that was called at stampin up conventions and it was i used to like leave early so i could get at the front of the queue to get to memento mall <laughs> so i'm a dag i like the tv on when i stamp i'm i'm not ashamed to say it i like the tv on i like the live the lifestyle station i like to watch all those international house hunters and i like to watch um What's my favourite? Fixer Upper. Oh my goodness. I'm in love with Chip and Joanna Gaines. So um, I have my TV on a lot. I'm not going to lie. Um, and this is my craft desk. This is where all the magic happens when I've not got um, creative block, which I seem to have at the moment. You love the show as well, Katrina. <sighs> Joanna and Chip, I want to come and be your child. I'm sure that's not the right thing to say. So here, um, Fudgy has a little bed. It's a new bed and she doesn't like it. So we're not sure what to do about that. Her beds are normally fluffy. Um, <laughs> you like um, Chip and Joanna and House Hunters too, Denise? <laughs> so anyways, okay, so now I'm going to give you a little guided tour of my desk are you guys bored or are you having fun tell me do you, are you do you is this okay all right so here I've got um let's start with the most important thing stamps 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 love them I have a lot of them and I've even sold a lot of them over the years but um this is my this is the current stamps from that I own from Stampin' Up so all I have a system and I'll tell you my system. So um, here when I get a new stamp, I have this little tray here. And this current year is getting a green dot. And there's also this, um, this labeler. So here on, the, on each, the back of each stamp set, I'll put the retail price. I'll put whether it's a... Chris, that CC means Christmas catalog, or um, or I've got AC for annual catalog, and which catalog year it is. So I put that on the back of each stamp set. So for instance, this is the Daisy Delight stamp set that is unused. I know, so naughty. Here it it's retails for thirty dollars. It has the code, it has it's an annual catalogue and the year that of its first appearance. 
just helps me when I go to sell those stamps down the track how much I spent on it so I know not to um, spend to you know give them away but I also know that I can't charge a million dollars for them either so I usually my retired stamps I usually am uh, doing at least you know the price I paid for them so 20 25 percent off but I need to know the retail price to start with <clears throat> so um, the these dots here um, mean that they were in the current previous previous catalog the green dots mean that they are from the new catalog so anything with a green dot you can see here is from the new annual catalog so I've been purchasing a few things um, I keep them in alphabetical order because that's the way my brain works. Some stamp sets I need and I still use even though they're retired. So they have an R on them. I need to get more coloured dots. But I found if I have this here, then it gets done. So as soon as it arrives, I just do that straight away before they go on, on the shelf. And then the green dot, having the green dots helps me go, hey, I need to make sure that I use those new stamp sets when I'm creating. At the top here, I like to have tea light going on um, when I can. I've got um, this, we don't sell this anymore, but I really, I like anything that turns like that. And I've got all my stamps on the caddy and the reinkers. The reinkers, I have their colors on the top because it helps me work out what color they are when they're in there. I know there's a lot of other systems people have that might be better for making sure that their reinkers are with their stamps, um, inks, but that's, it, that works for me, so I'm happy. The thing that I do with my ink pads, I don't have them. Some people I know put them in all the pinks together, all the blues together, all the reds together. Over the years, my system, and it's worked, so I don't want to change, is I just... Um, I put like a little bit of white ink and I put an R if it belongs to the Regals family. So all the Regals, can you see that R there? And if it belongs to an in colour family, it has a year, the year that it's arrived. So this is a new in colour powder pink. So it's in the year 17, which of course is 2017. So I know which year that in color um, group came from so I've got them in colors family colors so this is um, the so, um, subtles the brights the neutrals and the regals and that's on Ikea lazy Susan because I think it, it works better on the lazy Susan and I can grab it and turn it I like to have my Stampin' Up trimmer close at hand because I use it with every single card. Um, I like to have, and this is getting a bit depleted, I like to have card fronts and inserts close at hand. So the card fronts um, are just a little bit smaller than a regular card and they're in whisper white and I like to have some for inserts too. I'm Naughty Girl and I own a Misty, Mini Misty. I won't apologise. They are the bomb. Love them. Can't wait for Stampin' Up to get a wriggle on and we can get our own too because they're awesome. Um, Marvellous Markers. I got these trays off Amazon. They're separate trays and I actually got them when we had uh, Blendabilities um, because I love colouring. But I don't, I don't get rid of my markers. My markers just continue. Each year I get more markers and I've realised I need to get another row of caddies because I'm almost out of space. But I love to have my markers on show. I love that they're close at hand. Um, and I, I like them on display because they just are ridiculously pretty. This little... Um, this little tree was another thing from Stampin' Up. That was back when they had Memento Mall. And um, it's so good. I've got a bit of a thing for birds. I didn't know I had until I realised that all my decorations were birds. So apparently I have a thing for birds. 
and old fashioned -y stuff. So one of um, a couple of my teammates gave me the sign for my big birthday a few years ago. So and there's some just some things I like to use when I'm creating my radio, truly pretty much always on. I have my sponge daubers. Sometimes I'm lazy and I don't put them away. This is um, my team birthdays, you see, or anniversaries when they join. I do try to get cards out and make cards for my team, but I'm just not very good at it. Um, this is made by one of my teammates, Nat Hewitt, and this is fabulous. So this is, it's got all of the Stampin' Up! colours in it, and it, these are the ones that are in stock, I've got on hand. And then when I run out of a colour, I, you move it over the little paper swatch you move it over to the to order jar so when you're trying to rush and put your order in you can't remember which um, which cardstock you run out of you go to the jar and it will tell you found this heart rock on the beach here I keep my current punches we don't have as many punches as we used to have and I don't have all of them I have a lot of them um, but I love punches and I'll use them over dies just about, you know, just about 100% of the time because I love them. So I, I keep all of the circle punches in stock. Um, yeah, I really enjoy that. Here I found these little, these little apple, these little pears at an op shop and they're so adorable. They're made out of foam. Can you believe they are not real? They are ridiculously cute. Um, sponges, all of the colours attached to them. I'm pernickety about my sponges. I like to have one in each colour. Current washi tape. I only have this one, actually. I need to get more washi tape. But And I store them on the rings. That makes life super easy. My watercolour pencils, always close at hand because I adore them. And in these Stampin' Up! cases, with this little insert that I got from Kelly Kent's website, um, check that out if you want to get a little insert for your stamping um, case there. These little boxes I got from Ikea and I turn them on the side um, and I store a lot of my markers and things in there. I have my stamping acrylic blocks there the inks like um, blacks mementos versamark that kind of thing whisper white craft i have there i use it all the time i'm trying this new thing which is to keep my um to keep the accessories close by to my desk so I use them I tend to find I don't use a lot of accessories on my card and I'm trying to change that by having them close by quick and easy to get to yes keep your stamping scrub out all the time with the mist and then you might have a better chance of getting those stamps clean back into their stamp cases if they if you're stamping and then you just spray and clean have a little system it's um, I've got this around the wrong way but I like to have the I like to do the spray on this side clean it dry it stamp it off back in the case back on the shelf that's the idea doesn't always happen but if I have it out it has a much better chance of happening if you put that stamping mist away you will have much less chance so that's my desk that's where it all happens I like to keep, um, I get messy and then I try and clean it before I go to bed that night because if I will just avoid stamping if my desk is really messy. I won't come and stamp. I will do everything but because I don't like starting off with a messy desk. So I've learned that. Oh, I've just got this one little thing. I've just got this, um, I found this now. I still can't remember what that place was. If I remember what it was, it. Um, but you'll be able to find these online, these little caddies. And I have my scissors and my bone folder. I love this um, 
Yes. Uh, you've got to keep it clean and tidy before stamping, I think. Otherwise, your brain is cluttered. Well, for me anyway, not everybody. But um, this ruler is um, a tea ruler. Love it. Great, like, $3 purchase. Um, but, yes, all my scissors. I like to keep some paper towel in with my aqua painters so I don't ruin. I was going through a lot of grid paper because I was wiping off on the grid paper just with a couple of paper towels in this cute little um, this cute little cup, which I adore. Um, that's just really helped for me. And I keep a little, sh uh, I've got this online. I'm not sure if I like it, but it works well. Um, for When your blocks get super dirty, you can just use this shim chamois, which I got from the auto shop. And I'll show you down here the one I got that's what I got synthetic chamois from the auto shop um, <laughs> don't laugh at her husband <laughs> so I just got those from the auto shop I chopped them up into little bits and they stay nice and moist this is called a salt pig and it has the little you could also use baby wipe container those plastic baby wipe containers, I used to use those, but I thought that might be prettier and it just lives on here so I can get to it. So if your blocks or anything's got super inky, using those are great. You can use them on your stamps too because it's just water. It's nothing bad on that. Take the tips from this. This lady is very, she's clever. Tell your husband she's clever and she's insightful. <laughs> And very modest. This is where um, this is my excess stamps. These are my retired stamps and punches. I bought this little bookshelf at IKEA on Monday because I kept all of these in boxes and they were overrunning my house. They were in my bedroom, they were in my dining room. It was just driving me nuts. And every time someone wanted to buy something from me, I had to go and run and rifle through all the boxes. Um, so this, it cost me $29 and I put it together in 40 minutes. So go to Ikea if you can, if you've got to get like some little tiny bookshelf. It's not going to last forever, but it's doing the job. So these are all my retired stamp sets. If you're interested in purchasing retired stamp sets from me, I have a lot of them listed on my Facebook page where you are now. It's in the shop section. So go check those out. If you are one of my customers in my customer classroom or my VIP group, you will see my latest stamp sets listed there first because you guys are special. And then they'll go out to my other Facebook page. That's my planner. I try and keep my head straight by seeing a whole year in advance. And I think... <sighs> I think that's it. I think that is my craft space that you have seen all of it. Have I missed anything? So let me recap. I've the desk, the big white table that you saw, I got that off of Gumtree. I got it for a hundred dollars. It was a steal. And I'm not saying that you're gonna find one for a hundred dollars on Gumtree, but if you keep your eye out and you know your space that you have, you will find things. I got the shelves that you saw my stamps living on. They were That was like, here, let me show you again. Don't want to go back around. See this shelving here? This was not special. I know it doesn't look special, but it's not special. That was from Coles many years ago. Um, that uh, was for DVD racks and I've just laid them on their side and it fits it works perfectly for what I need so I keep thinking I should buy something snazzier because they cost me five dollars each and then I go well but it works so why change what works um, the you know the op shop filing cabinet the other filing cabinet I used for my business was a giveaway on a Facebook um, by sell swap group 
The table was a giveaway. My husband made that cutting station for me out of pallets that were free as well and he just hammered them together. So you can definitely have, and I think my stamp room is kind of nice. I like it. Um, you could definitely have a, a craft space. You can definitely have a craft space that is pretty nice for a cheap price. You just need to make sure that you think through the space that you have, how you like to work, if you like things close to you, if you like to spread out, if you like how you like to work. Think those through um, and then try things out. And um, if it doesn't work, if you've not spent a lot of money on it, no harm, no foul, right? If you've got something for free and it doesn't work, just give it to someone else for free. Pay it forward. Um, and then you're going to have more money to spend on the stamp sets, the paper, the all the tools that you love. So, um, and on your family too. So, you know, so you can get that new veranda that you need or build on that extra bedroom that your 10 year old is saying, when am I getting another room? When am I getting my room? So, um, or go on a holiday. So enjoy your stamping room and enjoy your goodies and enjoy your hobby. But it doesn't need, you don't need to have, you know, something purpose built and something glamorous to be happy. That's my tip of the week. <laughs> all right, my beautiful people. I hope you've enjoyed this tour. If you've got any questions at all, um, please write them in the comments. Share this video with your friends on your page because I'd love to have some more people watching and tuning in um, to make my business move forward. And um, yeah, any questions, sing out because that's what I'm here for. Of course, head on over to my blog, carolynbenny.com if you would like to make any purchases of your stamping up items. That's, that's my job. That's keeping my kids in braces. All right, I will see you beautiful people next Friday. That'll be, oh, I'm thinking I've got two more before the end of term, but um, I will see you next Friday, all going to plan here in my stamping room. See you later, girls and boys. Bye.